In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In this year of faith that Pope, former Pope Benedict proclaimed, we um, have a beautiful gospel today. This is the Sunday gospel for the fourth Sunday from year A, which can be read any Lenten season, not just during year A. And it is probably the gospel is one of the more, I'd say, interesting of the stories of the old of the of the gospels it really shows you that the gospels are truly what they are eyewitness accounts john who was probably there with our lord was you know witnessed this conversation and this event that took place with our lord and the blind man and later on you know the blind man who became a follower of our lord recounted how he had to defend Christ. You might say he, he didn't know Christ was the Son of God, but he defended the goodness that he saw in Christ. He knew that no one who was a sinner or who was displeasing to God could work a miracle, and he was the, he was the one who received that miracle. And so with that miracle that God worked for him, not only did our Lord give him sight for his eyes, but he also gave him sight of the, the gift of faith. And that already they might say the first inklings of that grace of the light of faith started to, to enlighten him and led him to eventually to make a direct act of faith in the Son of God. When our Lord said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Now that blind, that once blind man had heard that expression, Son of Man, knew it was a messianic phrase. It wasn't just, you know, any son of man, but the son of man, the Messiah. Do you believe in him? He says, who is he that I may believe in him? And our Lord said, he is he who is speaking to you. And that is when, and it says that he worshipped him, he adored our Lord. So this man, who was physically blind and had his eyesight restored, also had been given that even greater gift than eyesight. You might say the gift of faith is spiritual eyesight. We know that, when, that the gift of faith, that faith is a light, that we are able to see things because of the gift of faith that others are not able to see because they don't have that gift. And of course, our Lord wants to give that gift to everyone. But there are some who are disposed who are open and others who are not. And that's what our Lord is saying in the gospel today. You know, if you were born blind, there's no sin in that. You know, there's no sin as, you know, some people think, you know, uh, even today you may even hear this, you know, they talk about generations, healing generations, somehow somebody's sin is going to be carried on and visited upon their their next, uh, you know, dis their descendants and whatever, and it's... That's false. Uh, this was not the sin of this man or his parents that he was born blind, but rather, as our Lord said, God allowed him to be born blind so that he could manifest his great works in him. And um, this uh, young man who was blind physically was not, a f uh, was not a moral fault with him. But those who were the Pharisees, though, they had eyesight, but they didn't have the gift of faith. And, you know, there's a difference, though, between those who can't see and those who won't see. This man who was born blind couldn't see. He wasn't able to receive the light outside. You know, you might say his physical blindness was also, you might say, an example of the far greater blindness that the Pharisees had. They could see, but they refused to see. That's why their sin remains. It was a willful blindness. And that is the kind of blindness that, of course, is um, very prevalent today. 
in our society, especially with this whole, as when he, Cardinal Ratzinger, before he became Pope, talked about the dictatorship of moral relativism. People who are refusing to see the truth and say that there is no truth. It's whatever I want to make it. And truly that becomes, it's interesting that Pope Benedict was able to make that, um, those two phrases that, that the relationship between moral relativism and dictatorship. And we see that so clearly today in our country. We have a president who is a moral relativist. Truth is whatever I want to make it. And he's one of the most dictatorial men who's ever held the office. So much so that he won't even respect your own conscience. Yet, it's the liberals and, the, and those in that school who always want everybody to respect their conscience. You know, I can form my conscience any way I want, and I want you to respect it. But they won't respect your conscience if your conscience somehow goes against theirs and tells them that what they're doing is wrong. And so we have a whole level of society, just like in the time of our Lord, who are wanting to be blind and remain blind. They don't want to see because it's a, a willful blindness. They want to live in the dark. You know, our Lord says, I am the light. And so the, the thing about St. John and his gospel, he always portrays this contrast between light and darkness. The light came into the world, but the the, you know, the darkness um, refused, you might say, to receive the light. And this is the Pharisees very much. And those who are like them, they refuse to see. And there are people today still who refuse to see. The light of faith is being, hand our Lord is so generous. God is so generous. He gives the light of faith. As soon as he sees that a person is might say naturally disposed because they're seeking to know the truth. There's that famous expression, fides querens intellectans, faith seeking understanding. You know, when we have faith, we want to understand it better. So we have an intellectual um, activity, you might say, and we examine the revealed doctrines of our Lord and we can come to know more clearly and understand them more fully, but we can, of course, never exhaust it because it's, from God, and we can always learn more about these truths of our faith. But there's another uh, saying that's also very much true, intellect, and the, the intellect is seeking faith. Our mind is made to know the truth, and it wants to know the ultimate truths. And so when it gets to the point where it can't find the answers in nature alone, it says there has to be something far greater, and I know that there's a being greater than I that exists. And that's when God, when a person is open, is ready to give them that first gift of faith. Trouble is when people are not wanting to know the truth and they want to remain in the dark, they will not receive the gift because they are not humble. You know, when we talk about obedience of faith, that expression, obedience of faith, obedire means to hear. You have to have a certain submission, to want to listen. You know, when people, you can talk to some people and they won't listen because there's a certain lack of interest. There's a lack of humility that they think that they can learn from someone else so they won't listen. But to order for you to receive the gift of faith, you have to be able to listen. And uh, obedire, the obedience of faith, is what is so much needed Today, even when the blind man was talking to the Pharisees and they kept asking him, he kept telling them. Three times he told them how he was, how he was able to see. And he said to them, he said, um, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? So they, they, they were not only, you know, our Lord talked about those who have eyes but do not see and those who have ears but do not hear. It is those who are obstinate, those who are so set on their own will or their own agenda that they're not willing to see what is there, the truth. And humility is so important for the gift of faith, as we've said uh, many times already during this year of faith. 
We want to pray for those people who are so obstinate. Pray for them that they receive the gift of faith. And we must pray that we too do not become obstinate ourselves. And, and so because we know that the gift of faith is something that as we have been given it, we can also out of negligence or our own um, willful uh, disobedience can also lose the gift of faith. You know, it's sad to see that there can be people who have been so close to our Lord and, and then they can turn and walk away from him. And you think, how can that be? Someone who's walked with our Lord, who has, you know, uh, whether they be a priest or, you know, even a very good and holy lay person. And when they get to a point <clears throat> where they make choices and they can make choices which are really contrary because they put their will and their own what they think is their, their, their will above God's. And uh, we can see that how precious and how fragile this gift is, how it's put in a treasure of clay, and that we need to be truly grateful for the gift of faith, and we should nourish it and preserve it by constantly asking God for the grace and, and also making acts of faith. It's not enough that we just believe that we must also put that belief into practice. And uh, we know that that belief is put into practice when we do works of religion, when we worship God, especially, first and foremost. But also it is put into practice when we do works of charity to our neighbor and assist them. So our creed must be put in, into deeds. Otherwise, it is not a living faith. Even as we know that St. James says, show me your faith without works and I'll show you the faith that underlies my works. This is what we must always keep in mind that our faith is not meant to be just kept to ourselves. And maybe that's probably one of the biggest condemnations of our age is that so many Catholics did not go out to evangelize, did not go out to bring that faith to others. They just kind of kept their well, I'm Catholic, and they just kind of went on their way and didn't, didn't look to see about with this whole false ecumenism out there many times, you know, leave my neighbor there in his ignorance or whatever, but don't try to evangelize him. We know that that's not, that's not the full understanding of our Catholic faith. The church, by its very nature, and Catholics, by their very nature, must be evangelists. We're called to, as our Lord said, go out to all the world and tell the good news. And today, in our society and in the West especially, Christendom, Christianity especially, has been, its message has been shouted out over by the world, the secular mentality, the atheists, the materialists. And so we need to, once again, find our voice and speak the truth and proclaim it, as our Lord says, from the housetops. Let us today, as we meditate and reflect on the gospel of the man born blind, pray for those who are blind, not because they were born that way, but because they choose to be that way and that they will truly receive the gift to open their eyes and to see what it is that they are missing or that they are right now hating that which they think is their enemy, the church, is really their greatest friend and their salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.